You know, sometimes after a really, really long time of hard work and, and difficult things, something, something good comes out of it. After a long, cold spring, you finally get nice weather. After you finish school, you get a degree that you don't use, but at least you did it. And sometimes it's that you picked up a waitressing job because your art doesn't make a lot of money yet, and they give you a server book and they tell you to go home and personalize it. I was going to put a bunch of stickers on it because I am a sticker hoarder. But because I am a sticker hoarder and this is not important enough to put all my prized stickers on, I'm going to paint on it instead a mural that is going to take me several hours and a lot of time and effort. And a lot more time and effort than probably getting the same stickers again because that's definitely well within my means at this moment. But but why make things easy? Only only complicated things in this house. Only complicated things. But since since it's such a nice day outside, let's take this outside. Ah uh, yes, this is me trying to do the aesthetic setting your workstation up cliche and then deciding it was entirely not worth it because I don't clean my paint palette every time I use it and also I keep all my paint supplies in an old Amazon box because I am a sustainable queen and not because I'm too cheap and lazy to buy containers to organize my stuff into. First steps first, channeling your inner questionable makeup company releasing a new line of foundation. We're gonna make it all white. Honestly, since the book was pretty much entirely one color already and the goal painting is one that is relatively dark anyways, this probably was a step that could have been skipped, but in the interest of making the few bright colors that I was planning on including in the design possibly look even brighter, I'd say better safe than sorry. This white paint did make it easier to see my quick sketches that I put on there and the paint texture was easier to layer on top of than the original surface anyway, so it helped at any rate. Also, here's me thinking that I did a really good job painting only the outside, only to look inside and <sighs> that's okay, I'll scratch that off when it's dry and it won't create any visual issues that will bother me later down the line, for sure. I'm so good at keeping my hands clean. <laughs> So now that we have a solid base coat of blank, it is time to get into planning the design and roughly marking out where things go. I had a bunch of ideas at first, almost all of them being art or photographs or collages that I had saved to use as phone wallpapers but just forgot since having received my wedding photos like, I mean, look at this picture, it's so stinking cute, you think I'm gonna change my phone screen from that ever? No! But enough of me being obsessed with my own relationship every day. But look at all these cool things that I simply do not use for my phone background anymore. I narrowed it down to these two and eventually decided to merge some Van Gogh art with Betafish. That way it had something that I find fun and cool to paint mixed with Betafish, which are very near and dear to my heart. And also Betafish are a subject that I felt like I had the capacity to paint. And how did I know that? Well, if you've seen my sewing dinosaur hoodies video, you may have seen an incredibly large painting that is about 87% of the way completed that I worked on for like a week straight and then just stopped working on for whatever reason. But yeah, anyways, that really bolstered my personal confidence when it came to drawing fish. At any rate, I began sketching in the Van Gogh swirl stars and basic shapes with some sewing chalk that I uh, broke by stepping on accidentally because whenever I sew something, everything immediately becomes chaos and destruction. I mean, not that I'm super beat up about it being broken because it's not like its usefulness has diminished in any way, but you know, sure would be awesome if I were weren't the big dumb. With regards to the accuracy of this Van Gogh piece, it is both more saturated and also a little bit recomposed for a canvas of different dimensions, and some of the smaller details I definitely just approximated as best I could and or wanted to, so it's not like a forgery or anything like that, but in terms of the vibes, it's give and go. Another thing is that while I did my best to record the entire process, there is probably a decent amount of footage missing from this
this particular speed paint for a couple of reasons. Number one, which is the biggest reason, is because I don't have my camera set up specifically for recording many, many hours of footage. It probably would take me about five minutes to do that little extra research to figure out if my camera is even capable of taking video in longer than 20 minute segments, but you know, I didn't do that. So there will be a few moments where some progress isn't shown because I forgot to restart the camera. Or didn't notice that it had turned off. Also, the battery life on my camera is poo poo garbage stinky, so all the problems. But you can help prevent this issue by supporting me and my channel. That way I can get a better camera and you can see more of the process and you can also see cooler projects because unfortunately money is a prerequisite to being able to do a lot of the things that I want to do on this channel. Monetization, subscribers, and whatnot aside, I am truly grateful for all the support I have received since the start of my channel. I have probably one of the nicest comment sections on YouTube and some some of the best and most supportive subscribers I have ever seen in my life. Whether or not this ever becomes a viable source of income for me, I'm going to do my best to put out as many videos as I possibly can and share all these fun projects to inspire others or to share the joy that I get from pursuing projects that others may not be able to. I don't know if YouTube is still this for a lot of people, but at least for me growing up, it was a way that I could experience video games that I couldn't buy or didn't have consoles for. I loved and still love watching cooking videos to learn new flavors and techniques. I thrive off of art and sewing videos because I feel like all of these videos out there allow me to live vicariously through someone else's experiences. Experiences that I cannot afford or just don't have time to do. And now that I am so lucky to be in a position where I can do a little bit of that stuff, I want to be that sort of beacon for other people who are not able to access, purchase, or for whatever reason not be able to pursue D&D, sewing, art, and all the other projects along the way. I just hope for someone out there I get to be the kind of person that those other YouTubers were for me. Anyways, enough sentiment about the painting. Now, I haven't done many Van Gogh replicas in my life, which is to say I have done none and this would be my first, but before digital art became the most accessible means of art for me, my main medium was black and white pencil followed by acrylic on canvas. That being said, the work of Mr. Vincent has a lot of traits that my usual art style in acrylic does not possess. He has a lot of very heavy, dark lines in his work, he's really good at implying space and distance, and his color choices are much less saturated than my typical paint palette. For the record, I am very aware that Mr. Van Gogh is not Van Gogh and not even Van Gogh, it's Van Gogh or something equivalent, yet significantly less atrocious if you could speak Dutch very well, which I am 0% Dutch and 0% able to speak Dutch. I'm not calling him Van Gogh out of disrespect or anything like that, but I can't sit here blowing heavily into the microphone for 10 minutes. Like, I'm all for the whole, I had to learn your weird language or culture, now please learn how to say my name. But as someone who was born with a last name with 12 letters, of which only four were vowels, which just Polish things, I guess, and who is now married into a last name that has a whopping downgrade of 11 letters, I have had my fair share of moments where I said, yeah, that's correct, when it was in fact not correct because it is simply just not worth the trouble every time. So I feel like I'm at least a little qualified to have an opinion on this. That being said, I'm going to be painfully aware of the fact that I'm mispronouncing his name the entire time. There is no need to comment to let me know. I'm already sorry. Um, but here's a fun little note from script writing Lady Splitchin. Hi, future voiceover version of me that is ideally less sleep deprived than script writing me is right now. Not that we would ever do that aggro version of getting interactions on YouTube where you get interactions and view hours as a result of being a massive jerk on the internet, but imagine if we did completely normal videos that are 99% the usual content as it always is, but in every single video there is just one thing said that is a little bit incorrect so that people jump to the comment section to tell you what you did wrong and you get views because people are interacting with you. Imagine if we did that, which we would really try our best not to, but imagine. Uh, that's a really great note, script writing split chin, but I think we should stop drinking coffee at 2am and 
go to bed instead. I, I personally feel like that's a really good plan as the person who is reaping the consequences of your actions. But thanks. So let's talk about the fish side of the book. I was torn between these two pictures, but ended up picking the multicolor fish just because I felt like it matched the vibe better. Either way, I was trying to go with blue and orange, not only because blue and orangey yellow are starry night colors, but also because blue is the color of my first beloved precious beta fish Floyd, who died last year. May he rest in peace. And also orange is the color of my current beta fish Noodles, who is doing fantastic. Uh, he does hate having his picture taken, so this is the best I have of him, sorry, but I assure you he is doing wonderfully. Before I decided to paint beta fish, I was actually going to do koi fish because as a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, I just thought a starry night would need a good moon and to make a koi fish moon would be very fitting. But this specific picture of beta fish seemed to match the starry night vibe so much, I decided to go with it. Besides, I have a much more personal connection to beta fish than koi fish and the reference to UA and Avatar The Last Airbender felt like a bit of a reach at any rate. Although someone did think it was koi fish anyway, so two birds with one stone, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of what others thought, before the release of this video, I was actually able to take the server book to work with me for a few days and see what other people thought about it. For data, obviously, and not because I crave affirmation and validation. But to be honest, none of the customers have brought it up, which, you know what, it's not a big deal at all. In my experience, it's not super common for customers to notice personalized details, and some of them don't really care for conversation at all, which is fine by me. I just want to ring in your order before what you have said decides to exit my brain wrinkles and jump into the abyss, which means I have to run back and re-ask you what you needed again. That being said, the rest of the wait staff that I usually share my shifts with were all really excited about the art. One of them asked if I could even make one for her. And I mean, she loves the work of Van Gogh and also she's amazing at what she does, so obviously I'm going to do that for her, and hopefully in a timely manner. Anyways, enjoy this little music montage because I don't know how to transition to my next paragraph. So turns out fish were actually much more of a challenge than I expected them to be. I definitely thought I had a much better grasp on painting beta fish, but this image definitely did not make me feel that way. I think it was because instead of working in black and white, I had a ton of colors to work with, and especially very bright and dark colors mixed into the same fish, which made it super difficult for me to add any depth, and it's not like I could just add a multiply layer to the painting super easily. Also blending the semi-realistic style that I was painting the fish in with the impressionist artwork was a little bit of a pain. It was actually my partner who suggested doing the gradient from dark to light on the fish side and I definitely think that helped blend everything together and also helped the fish stand out a lot more instead of getting sort of lost in the colors. Honestly when I finished the painting I wasn't super happy with it but I think now that it's dried and I've had it for a bit it's really grown on me and I really truly love how it has turned out. You know what the worst thing about this project was? 
is that even though I sprayed it with a coat of polyacrylic sealant and I'm fairly sure that it won't flake off or wipe off with just general or even a lot of use, I am so nervous about scratching it or getting it dirty, which is not ideal for a food service environment where you're moving a lot and touching a lot of food and drinks. Yeah, but on the bright side, at least that means I really like how it looks. And the second worst thing about this project is that I am a fool. I did not tape the inside of the project off. I thought, you know, I'm just painting one side. How hard can it be to not get paint on the underside? And even if I do get paint on the underside, I can always just come back later and scratch it off or wash it off. Um, no. The paint is on the inside and because of the texture and the thinness of the material, I couldn't scratch it off, I couldn't wash it off. So yeah, you can see sort of there's a lot of little white paint stains that I can't really do anything about. Uh, so I covered it up with stickers. Secret cats on the inside of uh, fish. And and I don't I don't mind. I don't mind. It's just a fun little thing. A little secret for me to make me happy. It's just it's just there to it's just there to be pretty. Not not to cover up my my mistakes and uh poor decisions of the past. But genuinely, I am so freaking pleased with how this came out. There's just something kind of thrilling or at the very least amusing about the work sanctioned personalization of work provided items. Plus getting to do something physical instead of digital is always fun, even if it's incredibly messy. And you would think after all of these years of making art, I would have figured out how to not get it all over myself. But no, that is not the case. Perhaps one of these days, I will start allocating my ability score points into dexterity as I level up. But when will that day be? Who knows? Not me. Oh.